So I'll be talking about a study that we are uh, still doing in our Department of Regional Water Studies here in the university. And uh, so I start with the effects on urbanization and then we will discuss the soil infiltration rates. So this typically, of course, Rumi was also talking about this, that uh, we are having progressive urbanization. As of now, we are at 377 million. But uh, when we reach 2050, we'll be at 50% uh, uh, of the population living in urban areas. And this, what is really going to happen is, we already know that our urban infrastructure is not really geared up. That is the reason we see these floods and we have to cope with them. And when we have to, today we are at 377 million, and when this goes up to 600 million, there will still be a balanced population who are going to live in cities. And what about the infrastructure development and what is going to happen to the urban area as in the open space? And uh, so uh, we know that urbanization is inevitable. The pressure on land is increasing, and land use change is bound to happen. So this built up area is increasing in urban uh, spaces. So we have impervious surfaces. Now, uh, the point is not just that we have more of impervious surfaces, but it is also the condition of the so-called pervious surface or the open areas where we have vegetation. Uh, we see that even as far as the urban um, open spaces are concerned, the urban hydrology is getting affected. Uh, and that is uh, something that we see with the reflection of the regular water logging that happens in cities after heavy rainfall. So infiltration from open areas is a major source of reducing storm water flow during rainwater events. It is not just the uh, storm flow that goes through the drainage system, but also the water that is absorbed by the soil. Uh, so it is not just the rise in impervious areas, but it is also the fact that as far as urban soil is concerned, urban soil cannot be compared with agricultural soil as far as, as its ability to absorb water is concerned. It is under severe stress. What we really see in open areas is that they are utilized for temporary storage work or work areas for nearby construction projects. We also see that whenever there is transportation need, whenever we need to widen our roads, we actually encroach on the public parks and gardens. And then uh, whenever trees are injured, we don't really take care of the tree. While uh, what I would like to tell here is, it is not just the urban soil, but it is also the roots through which the water goes to the soil below. And uh, trenching ac activities are something that we see often in the urban areas. And the soil gets damaged completely. And not just that, it also has chemical impacts. Now, these are photographs that I have taken from nearby areas. All of you who come to Vasant Kunj regularly, you will see this, or any other part of South Delhi. Look at the tree there. We not only have that as an uprooted tree, but we also have put paving blocks on the side. And this is supposed to be an open space. No matter that it is an open space, but look at the condition of the urban soil as well as the roots. And down below also what you can see is that we have done some trenching activities, we have put some pipes, and then we have just managed to put the soil together, not taking care of the actual properties of the soil. And uh, look at that loading, the temporary construction storage that I was talking about. There also you can see that uh, the tree that you see next to it, how, how much chance of that tree surviving for a much longer time? Of course, that is a question mark. So as far as the status of the urban soil is concerned, it is not just that you saw that kind of disturbance. We also find plastic material. We have indiscriminate debris that we put on this soil. And this ultimately leads to low porosity. There is restricted aeration and a very slow infiltration rate and drainage. And sometimes what happens is because of the debris material that we put on these kind of soils, the soils also have high alkalinity. So the kind of quality of water that is going and, uh, and of course, recharging the groundwater if we have an aquifer below becomes a question mark. Uh, so um, what we see is that um, most of the soil at roadsides and adjacent to soils are very disturbed and therefore the natural soil 
horizon really is no longer what it is expected to be. And many times soil replacement is used to improve the health of the vegetation. However, it is limited to a very small volume. We just put it in a small soil pit or a nano channel and expect it to do all the infiltration activity. Now, ideally speaking, the infiltration really happens depending on the quality of the soil in the top 30 centimeters. And um, unfortunately, in case of South and Southwest Delhi, we are um, very close to the ridge. And that is why we do not have a very thick soil cover. We barely have 30 centimeters or at best 50 centimeters and we have crystalline rock below. So, uh, so we have to really take care of the vegetation so that we have uh, this rainwater uh, flow that takes place. And this is important because this leads to delayed flow. And that is why we will have a reduced um, uh, reduced storm water flow. Now these are typical infiltration rates that I show you here. Uh, sand happens to have the highest infiltration rate at 30 millimeters per hour and as we come to clay it becomes barely 1 to 5 millimeters per hour. Uh, and during, uh, if the soil is dry then we see that the initial infiltration rates can be much higher than the standard rates that I have written here. As far as the standard rates are concerned, this is the infiltration rate, let us say, after one hour of infiltration. And um, uh, what we found when we did the sieve analysis of the soil here is that um, in this locality, most of the soil happens to be fine sand or medium sand or coarse sand. So uh, the fact that it, is, it has fine sand and medium sand, so we would expect a higher rate of infiltration. And that is what we saw, that generally sand has an infiltration rate of 30 millimeters per hour. So we find that we found that kind of infiltration rates whenever we went to the park and we carried out the infiltration studies. But uh, when we were doing it in, um, uh, we were carrying out the infiltration studies next to the road where we have soil, we really found that it had a lot of debris material, plastic in it, and that is how the infiltration rates in these soils, in spite of the fact that it was sand, it was barely at five millimeters per hour, seven millimeters per hour, and sometimes even less. So uh, what we really, and of course we did the modeling studies also with Horton's model, and uh, though it follows the model, but the measured rates are actually lowered, uh, lower than the Horton's uh, rate. Now with this, if I relate it to the rainfall, um, rainfall characteristics, we are of course talking in terms of rainfall, what uh, um, in urban areas, the short spells of rainfall that we have. Now in general what happens is that the storm drainage structures as far as our manual is concerned are designed for a rainfall intensity of 25 millimeters per hour. So uh, the storm drainage channels are only uh, supposed to take water catering to that 25 millimeter per hour. And um, in, in even in case of Delhi, we find that there are these short, um, short rainfall durations uh, which have uh, got a high intensity of around 60 to 65 millimeters per hour. Now what really happens is a part of it is taken by the storm drainage channels while the other part is supposed to be, uh, it, is, uh, it is expected that the urban soil is going to absorb it because it has the infiltration capacity. But unfortunately, you saw that if the urban soil happens to be disturbed, then it loses its capacity to absorb that kind of water. And therefore, we have this additional water which really flows on the roads like this. All of us who stay in Delhi know that this happens. And this, uh, this uh, still happens in Delhi in spite of the fact that in Delhi, we do not have too much rainfall as compared to Chennai or Calcutta but you will see that these are typical scenes that we see. You can see a lot of vegetation around, but uh, the soil is very compact, and therefore the pore spaces are very, very small, and therefore the soil uh, does not help in the infiltration of water. So the way forward obviously would be that, um, uh, that we really think in terms of urban forestry. Uh, it should not be fragmented as it is today. We should have our drainage maps ready and really look in terms of, uh, we'll start working in terms of eco-hydrology that we speak about and something that Professor Bandhupadhyay also mentioned that we, we have to think in terms of the biodiversity, the tree cover, that also helps in, um, in addressing urban uh, flooding situation. So 
Um, these are typical things that I have written about eco-hydrology and the balance that we must have about the soil presence and urban development markers. So thank you very much for your patient he hearing.